Okay, so in this uh, second part of the insert mesh brush, we're going to continue on making uh, a repeated uh, pattern, something that can look like a chain. Uh, so what I want to do here is go over to my, I'll go to the ring 3D, and uh, not that ring 3D, where is my ring 3D, there it goes. And what I first want to do, the step that I missed, is I first want to make it a make poly mesh 3D. So once you do that, you now have this piece of geometry. You want to make sure it's a poly mesh 3D, otherwise this won't work. And I want to make a few copies, so I'm going to duplicate it. And this time, I'll uh, move it and position it as I'm making a copy of it. So the first copy is there. I'll duplicate this again. I want to make my next link here. I'll rotate that again, something like this. And duplicate once more. And here I'm going to make this a little more unique by scaling it another way. And the top one I'll scale across this way. All right, so this is my chain part. And I want to merge these down now. I want to merge them all into one uh, subtool. So I'm going to merge down, merge down, and merge down. Now you may get this message that warns you that if you merge it, it's an undoable operation and you're just going to hit yes. I check the uh, the one that allows you to bypass it until your next startup. You may want to do that, but actually you don't want to mess with that right now because it's a little too early for you to, you know, click around and, you know, have these uh, issues where you're deleting things permanently without getting the uh, confirmation. So here, if I go to the poly grouping, shift F, you notice that there's different groups here. Now the first two color groups are the same and the last one, the last two are unique. What we need is we need a unique color group for the top and bottom which we have but we have to change these two middle groups so that this is the same color. So I'm going to hold down control and shift and click twice on one object Actually, here, what I have to do first is go to polygroups and click on auto groups. This will make two groups for this object. And then for these middle groups, I'm going to hold down Control and Shift and click once again to hide it. And then I can hold down Control and Shift still and drag a box. Oops, I got the wrong setting here. Let me fix that. I can drag a box outside the object and it'll invert the, uh, the selection. And what you want to do is uh, group visible here. And if you get comfortable with hotkeys, Control W is the group visible. Control W. That's a nice one so you can cycle through colors. So if I hold on Control Shift and tap on the uh, pen, let me change that color. It's too similar to the top color. So what we have here is we have three different groups. We have four objects with three groups. So we have the top group, the middle group, and the bottom group. All right. So now what I want to do is go to my brushes uh, menu and select create insert mesh brush. And this is going to be a new one. I hit new. And so we created the brush. Now I'm going to go to another object. I'll just choose the sphere again. And we want to make sure it's a poly mesh 3D because it won't work otherwise. Shift F to get rid of the poly frame and drag out. So here's my chain. So it's not exactly a chain at this moment, it's a section of it, uh, a chain, but we want to continue this all the way around, so we're going to turn the stroke into curve mode. And once I do that now, I will have this repeated pattern. And this starts with the link that we have at the top and ends with the uh, unique link again. And if we look at the poly groups, Shift F, you'll see, let me do this again here on the side. So you'll see that we have the top group, which is one color, the middle section, and the end. So this is a really powerful tool here. And if we want to drop it, we just click on that object and it releases the curve. And here we have our chain. Now there's a few more settings that I want to show you. And then we'll just like uh, end this. You get the idea. So if I drag out a curve here and we want to update the size, we can do that. We know how to do that. But we also may want to change the depth of this brush. 
this chain. So while the curve is still active, what you can do is you can go to brushes or the brush uh, menu and you can look for something called depth. And if you click on depth, you have this depth marker here, this uh, indicator. It's like a, an, a sphere and a horizon line and your object is basically slightly above the horizon. So if you drag it down and then click on your object again, you'll see that now it's embedded into the object. Too much actually. So I'm going to go back to brush, move this thing like halfway, and then click on it again. And there you see, you know, it's embedded like halfway. And now if I go back to brush and I bring that way up and then update it, let's see what happens. Now it's sitting way above the object. So a little, you know, a uh, uh, little bit of uh, customizing there to get the proper height off the object. The stroke is going to give you the repeated pattern. You can turn it off to get the section back. And uh, the last thing is, is when you spend time making a cool chain like this, you know, I've made like several different chains. And the thing you want to do is you want to have a quick access to that chain again on a separate file. What you can do is save your chain out. So if you go over to your brushes while you have that chain selected, you can just go save as. And you notice that the uh, save as type is a brush uh, Z, ZBP, ZBrush uh, preset. And if you name this like uh, whatever, chain one, and you save it the next time you open ZBrush, you can go to uh, load brush and then select it. And you'll have your chain brush just like that. So you can make a nice library of chains or other objects that have these uh, insert mesh brushes. So that's it for the uh, custom insert mesh chain brush or stroke uh, brush.